Hey guys, today we are going to make predictions from scatter plots with trend lines. So first we're going to talk about what is a trend line and how we can use it to make predictions. So a trend line is a line that best describes or fits the data in a scatter plot. Sometimes people call it the line of best fit, but we're mostly going to call it a trend line. Trend lines can be used to make predictions about the data since it fits the data. To draw a trend line, you want to draw a line in the middle of all the points that's going the same direction as your data. So we're not just going to cut it in the middle, it needs to go the same direction. We should have about the same amount of points above the line as we do below the line. So first thing we're going to do is just practice drawing trend lines. You have to be very, very careful whenever you're drawing a trend line. If you're doing it on the computer, then make sure you're using a line tool. They have that on Pear Deck and on GoFormative. And if you're doing it by hand, then you want to use a straight edge like a ruler. So you want to make it go through the middle. Okay. And another thing, whenever you're drawing your trend lines, don't be afraid to start over. This one is too high. You can see I have more points below than I do above. So I need to try again. Needs to go through the middle in the same direction. Okay, I'm gonna move mine over a little bit. There we go. That is better. Okay, this one we have a negative correlation. Same thing, it needs to be going the same direction and through the middle of my points. So that looks pretty good. Okay, and then this one, my points are more spread out. Still the same thing, it needs to go through the middle. I'm gonna adjust this one. There we go. So make sure it is perfectly straight. Use a line tool if you're doing it on the computer and if you're doing it by hand, then use a ruler. So let's look at this first one. It says, the graph shows the average number of hours a group of 13 middle schoolers watches Netflix and sleeps. What is the best prediction of the number of hours a middle schooler would sleep if they watched two hours of Netflix? So they do not tell us draw a trend line, but they tell us make a prediction. And that's how we know we need to draw a trend line so that we're able to make a prediction. So if you notice my data is kind of in the middle of the graph, they're asking us to predict um, how much sleep would they get if they watched two hours of Netflix, which would be right here. And if we look up from there, we don't have any points there. So we're gonna have to make sure that we extend our trend line to go throughout the whole graph so we can use it to make predictions. Okay, so let's carefully draw our trend line. Need to move it a bit, there we go. Okay, so now that I have my trend line, I can make this prediction. How much sleep would they get if they watched two hours of Netflix? So make sure you look carefully, two hours of Netflix, that's the Y axis. So I'm gonna go over from there. And then down, it would be about seven hours of sleep. Okay, then let's look at the next one. It says, what is the best prediction of the number of hours a middle schooler would watch Netflix if they sleep for eight hours? So this time they gave us the X axis, sleep for eight hours. So that's about halfway between zero and one. So we could say about 0 0.5 hours of sleep. Not very much, or sorry, 0 0.5 hours of Netflix. All right, let's look at number two. It says the graph shows the number of guests and the cost of catering for 14 weddings. What is the best prediction for the cost of a 100 person wedding. So again, they don't tell us to draw the trend line, but we know we need to do that because it's asking us to make a prediction. So let's carefully draw our trend line. Need to adjust mine. Okay, I'm gonna adjust it a little bit more. That first try wasn't very good. That's okay, sometimes you have to do it more than once. Okay, 
that looks a little bit better. It's going through the middle of my data and the same direction. So now we can use this to make predictions. It says, um, what is the best prediction for catering cost of a 100 person wedding? So the number of guests is on the X axis. So I'm gonna go to 100 there. And it looks like I'm a little bit above 900 between 800 and 1000. So I'm going to guess about $925. Okay, then the next one says, what is the best prediction for the number of guests that um, cost $200 for catering? So this time they gave us $200 for catering. That's on the Y axis. I'm going to go over there. That's between zero it's between 10 and 20, so I'm gonna say about 15 guests. All right, let's look at number three. It says the graph below shows the number of items purchased and the total cost that 13 people spent at the farmer's market. Based on the data shown, which of the following is the best prediction for the total cost that someone would spend if they purchased seven items? So again, they don't tell us use a trend line, but they say make a prediction. So we know we need to draw a trend line. So let's go ahead and do that. It goes through the middle of our data. Okay, I'm going to try again because it's not placing it exactly where I want it. There we go. That one looks a little bit better. Okay, so now let's read the question and go find what they're asking for on the graph. Um, find the total cost that someone would spend if they purchased seven items. So we're looking for total cost, which is on the y-axis. They gave us the seven items, which is right here between six and eight. And it looks like it is above 35. That would be 35 right there. Just a bit above 35. And the closest answer to that would be 37. Okay, last one, number four, the graph below shows the number of baskets Jimmy made when he was a certain amount of feet from the basketball hoop. Based on the data shown, which of the following is the best prediction for the distance Jimmy was from the hoop if he made three baskets? So again, they didn't tell us draw a trend line, but they said make a prediction. So that's how we know to do that. I'm gonna extend my trend line out so we can predict with it. All right, and that looks pretty good. So let's go see what they were talking about. They said, um, best prediction for the distance. So that's the X values. He was if he made three baskets. So they gave us a Y value since that was the Y axis, what it represents, the number of baskets made. So if he made three baskets, let's see how far he probably was. Really close to 14, a little bit below it. So I'm going to go with 13. That's the best guess on that one. 